welcome back to Gabbing with Jessa. Today's video is a combination of sorts because it is something I am super excited to talk about. Last weekend, I went to go see M. Night Shyamalan's new movie, Knock at the Cabin, and I have been so excited, nay ecstatic, to see this movie. Not because I'm like a huge M. Night Shyamalan stan. I've seen his movies. I like his work. I think there's good work and bad work, you know, just the typical kind of Shyamalan thing. But because I figured out that this movie not only was coming out, but was also filmed in my hometown in New Jersey. Now, I am from a very small town in New Jersey, one of those towns where you know you know everyone, you grow up with everyone, you've been with around the same people from elementary school all the way to high school. It's just a town that knows everyone. It is in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey, which is home to many rumors of many different kind of creepy, extraterrestrial, just fun legends, including something like the Jersey Devil. And that is so fun. I loved where I grew up. I, it was this weird little pocket of New Jersey that I don't think people really think about when they hear the term Jersey. They just think, you know, New York City or people that have come down from New York, Philly as well. And so it's this own little area that I have grown to love so much and has meant the world to me where I grew, it's where I've grown up and where I've known as my very first home. But with that, with coming from such a small town, you know everything. And yes, of course, I am a part of the Facebook group that encompasses not just my town, but the few other small, very similar towns that surround it. And I found out that Knock at the Cabin was being filmed in my hometown from a ranty Facebook post. I want to say this was back in like May of 2022, maybe early June of 2022 where, you know, I'm not a huge M. Night fan or Stan or anything like that, so it's not like I knew that this movie was coming out anytime soon or that it was happening, and that's how I figured out it was filmed in my hometown. No, it was because some mom on Facebook had genuine concerns, but I just thought the Facebook post was really funny, and I'm just going to read it to you because this is exactly how I found out that a movie was being filmed in my small town. I'm going to put the screenshots up, but I'm going to be blurring out uh, the names of the individual that put it on there, the name of the town, uh, all like she talks and goes into things about the mayor. I'm going to blur out everyone's name just because I don't want it to get out there. I don't want it to just be, you know, now a new touristy thing. I don't want to like put, throw anyone under the bus or something like that. This is just more so for my entertainment. And this, reading this, scrolling through Facebook, just on a break at my job was exactly how I figured this out. I'm calling out the township. So here it goes. New information. The mayor of the township owns the property, so wanted to keep it hush hush. A multi-million dollar movie is being made in the township on this road. M. Night Shyamalan, director of Sixth Sense, is also director of this movie called Knock at the Cabin. There was no traffic before this started, maybe five to ten cars a day. Now, there are 60 plus vehicles, dump trucks, tractor trailers, box trucks, cars, and more cars using this road every day with no regard to the speed limit and the families that live on this one lane road. I have contacted the township. I will continue. I have contacted the state police several times and will continue. Lady number one is the only township committee person who has helped in every way she can. I reached out to lady number one to see what could be done to help reduce the speed on the road. She had digital speed limit signs installed so the drivers would know how fast they were going. The speed limit is 25 miles per hour. I emailed and called the mayor and other committee members. This individual, the mayor, this individual, Deputy, Ma Deputy Mayor, this individual, and this individual. Committee members to see what else could be done. No response. Not from any of these people except lady number one. I was told by a source that the township wants the movie filming kept hush hush. There was a township meeting scheduled for Monday night, but was suddenly canceled. Rumored, it, rumor has it they knew I was attending and would talk about the movie. Not sure if true. 
There were two children almost hit at separate times at their bus stops. Signs that were put up have been run over by speeding cars and trucks. There are witnesses to these events. There are some that say that are abiding by the speed limit, but not many. It seems to be a raceway. State police have been called numerous times. They have talked to the production company several times. In fact, I stopped there this morning and talked to them in person. I was told the township has to do something. The township will not respond. Who are these people? What exactly are they doing for the township? If this was any other place, there would be an officer posted for traffic control and safety. This would be a reasonable exception to ensure everyone's safety. And so a lot of the comments on that, including my first thought is, why are you putting this on Facebook? Now crazy people who love film, like me, are going to now try to go and see these people, especially when you look up M. Night Shyamalan or Knock at the Cabin, and you see some of the names that are attached to this film. Names like Dave Bautista, Rupert Grant, Jonathan Groff, Ben Aldridge, like pretty high up names. Maybe not so much Ben Aldridge, but at least the first three who are known by Broadway fans or Marvel fans or Harry Potter fans are going to want to seek out this road. And I know the exact road she's talking about. It is a dirt road. It is a one lane road. There's not very many houses on it. And it's kind of that's in a way a little stereotypical where it's like, you know, you just don't go down there unless you live down there. And it's just, it's crazy because I understand her concerns because like she says, there's not many cars because it's probably just the families that live there. And this production company probably did see, you know, just, oh, another dirt road, but don't understand that people do live in these backwoods. It's not an abandoned area. But I did think the post was kind of funny. I did think it was pretty interesting. Um, I didn't see anything. Unfortunately, I was working during when they would probably be filming. And so every time that I tried to pass by at least this road where the cabin is located on, I never got to see it. But then there's rumors that like, I heard from at least from that post that you know the mayor owns the land and I know who the mayor is it's the same mayor that I've grown up with like her son was a year older than me in school so I knew him all through like middle school and high school then I also heard that it was technically like her father's or her grandfather's land and that M. Knight built this cabin on it but then I heard that the cabin was already part of the property but I don't really know, but it does seem like it has something to do with the mayor and the town, which I think is really interesting that they're not trying to publicize it in a way, being like, hey, look, our small town's gonna be in this big movie. And then a few, like a week later, a few days later, I don't really remember the timeline, uh, I then heard the local uh, diner, I guess you can call it. It's like an ice cream place, but it also has like diner food. It's it's not even called like a diner or anything like that. And I'm not going to say the name of it. Cause again, I don't want to draw too much attention to it, even though, you know, if, if you know, you know, it's called Angie's roadside diner. It comes in at the end of the movie, which I'll talk about the movie a little bit, but it's called Angie's roadside diner in the movie. That is not the actual name of the location, but I know exactly where it's located. I heard they were filming that day. I have a video here of me driving by with all of the, production company. It was so cool to see like the road name change. And it was just so fascinating to then see it in the movie as well, because like across the street is where my family has gotten their Christmas tree for like the last like few years. And so it's super cool to see something that you grew up with that you've seen every day that didn't really mean much to you be a part of this movie. And so that was also really cool. And I think that just made my expectations like 10 times higher than they should have been for this movie. M. Night Shyamalan, as most people know, is just such a, con not even a controversial director. It's not like he's done anything bad, but like, he's just so hit or miss, I feel like. And old got really mixed reviews. I heard more negative than more positive. And so I'm like, okay, he's, he's due for a good one. He's due for a good one, right? And if this good one happens in my hometown, I am so happy, like so happy. This little town with two stoplights in the entire thing 
is going to be featured in this movie. That's so cool. Even if you don't see much of the town because they're stuck in the cabin, it's just a cool thing to know. And then especially getting to see the diner there at the end, which it's, I, I, I can't call it a diner because like, I guess that's technically like what it is, but it just doesn't feel right to call it that. I don't know. But I also just want to talk about the movie. I did see it and I thought it was pretty okay. I did read the book first. I actually read it leading up to the release of that movie that week. It is based on the novel called The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. And I definitely liked the book more than I liked the movie. In some ways, I'm like, ooh, I kind of wish I didn't read the book first. Just because I wanted to keep my excitement up there. Which I shouldn't be happy to, you know... My expectations were definitely higher than they should have been. And that's only because it was filmed in my hometown and I was just so excited for it. But Knock at the Cabin is an, a psychological, apocalyptic horror movie that focuses on this family of three. They have decided to leave their town. I'm pretty sure they're based out of Philadelphia in the movie. They never say it, but I'm pretty sure because it was also filmed in Philly as well. And they're venturing off in the woods in Pennsylvania. They are just vacationing, having a good time, trying to unplug when four intruders come and say that they need to make a willing sacrifice of one of their family members before the apocalypse occurs. Now, in the book, I feel like I liked it a lot more because of, obviously with the book, there's more details there. With some of the stuff that was cut, I agree with. But I think there were better themes and they expanded upon those themes better than the movie did. And the movie just felt very rushed. The pacing felt weird to me. But it was still enjoyable. The first half of the movie is basically the first half of the book with slight changes. But then when those slight changes start happening, then I was still like kind of on the edge of my seat like, oh, what's gonna happen now? Like, I don't know what's gonna happen anymore. It was just, it was a good time. But I wish that... It kept up with how excited I was for like the beginning half of the movie when they was matching it. I thought the book had a perfectly fine ending, which I know a lot of people would not like. And the uh, M. Night twist in this isn't as twisty as normal. And I just think that the first half of the movie was just done so much better with the characters and the shots. Like there's some really uncomfortable Dutch angle like close ups that just felt really interesting because of these characters and I knew exactly like who they were and how they were feeling with everything because of the book. But then it started going off in the second half and it just didn't really work for me the way I would have liked it to. I don't wanna to talk too much about spoilers in here. I definitely think that the movie tries to be a little more thriller rather than like psychological like thriller, like the book was a book that it, the, the book definitely made me think a lot more than this movie had to, and I think that was my one of my main issues with it is because it just I like he just made it seem like, and I'm not saying he thinks that his audience is like dumb or can't pick up on things, but it, he made it seem like that we wouldn't be able to pick up on certain things, and he just explained it out to us at the end which I know some people need and I know some people like because they don't like an ambiguous ending or ambiguous parts, which is fine, but it just wasn't the book. And I know, I think there were some interviews with M. Night saying, oh, he wants these to be like two separate entities, like the book's over here and the movie's over here and they're related, but they're not like the same, which I understand. I don't think any book to movie adaptation is ever the same. I think it is still two separate entities. But I don't know, I think if he left it a little more ambiguous, it would have been better. And I just wish, I'm going to do a whole book versus movie comparison on this. I really want to get back into that. And I think it'll be fun to start with this one because I was so excited for it. And so I still think this is a movie people will like. Like on my Pokemon rating system, I'm going to give it a love disc because I think that people will still very much enjoy this movie. It just... My expectations were way too high because it was filmed in my hometown and it just didn't live up to the book like I wish that it did. 
like when I finished the book, I was like, wait, how does the diner play into this? And so I knew that would probably be part of the twist or part of just different scenes that were going on. But I don't know. I wish there was more to it than what we were given. So I just wanted to make a fun little video kind of talking about how cool it was that this movie was filmed in my hometown along with a little bit of my review. Like I said, I'm going to give this a love disc on my Pokemon rating system. I definitely think there's stuff there for everyone, for a general audience to like, but as for someone who read the book, I kind of wish it went more in that direction. But let me know, did you see Knock at the Cabin? Has a movie been filmed in your hometown? Let me know all that more down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, keep on gabbing.